Good morning, folks. We've got major news today in recognizing the Solar Destroyer. There's satellite missions, cosmology, and a solar wind fluctuation. Let's begin at spaceweathernews.com. And we find the last 24 hours on our star very calm, very quiet. Coronal hold departing on the north and incoming on the south. The northern opening has its solar wind just arriving at Earth this morning. Density always spikes first, and then the speed will follow. When they stagger like that, it's a coronal hole stream, while CMEs have the rise and fall together. All is quiet for now in the magnetosphere. Congratulations to Ferris Walt, 2017 National Science Champion, top 100 in the world in the 2018 Google competition, and now winner of the GOES 2019 Virtual Science Fair, and all of it using the sun as a controller of tropical cyclone activity. Once more, congratulations, Ferris Walt. We've got an animation out next from the Psych Mission, where getting psyched about a metal asteroid is the easy part. Video and accompanying article are linked below. I think the cooler satellite mission, however, in the news today is Star Shield. Its post-launch unfolding into full mission operation will be a bit like origami, but when finished, it will be able to be a moving, opaque star blocker that will allow for the discovery of exoplanets. Just turn off the star in the middle. Up next, Space P. You think I'm joking? No. The chemical compound urea is now detected definitively in deep space. Folks, there is bad aim, and then there's that. Holy moly. Now on to our top stories. First, we have an excellent recognition of the sun's alter ego. The 2400-year cycle is now hinted at in this new work, suggesting that the sun should have a cataclysmic-level superflare every 2,000 to 3,000 years. This is, of course, important because it's almost certainly the past and near-term future of this planet, and because it hints at changes needed to the solar dynamo model. The ability to access a deeper beast is what we've seen out of another group in Colorado as well. It does appear that between Boulder and the Astronomical Society of Japan, the full super flare potential of our star is now realized. It's always good to see the interstellar magnetic fields getting more attention. They do control galactic dynamics and star formation, and here they think they can use the ambient cosmic emissions, like from the CMB, to learn more about them. Now in the wake of the dark matter failure, and with the rise of the plasma universe physics from the national labs, we have seen desperation from dark matter crews, allowing them to advance some crazy ideas, including dark matter particles the size of 100 million protons, which is lunacy. But here, it's the dark photons, dark electromagnetism, and a dark monopole magnetic moment. Well, that certainly sounds more plausible and electromagnetic than the magical matter they made up and which doesn't interact well with anything. Dark photons have been searched for before, and I'll probably ride a unicorn through Times Square before they find a monopole anything. But their electromagnetic discourse at least doesn't make me angry like most cosmology papers these days. Something happy here, my wife and our CEO Kat will be at a women's business pop-up here in Colorado Springs this weekend. It is a great chance for anyone local to support local women and the observers. Not in Colorado. Her children's books are at otf.cells.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. It's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.